They're all coming in. Give it one more second here and then we'll start it out. Okay, welcome to the virtual college fair exploration for all of West Virginia students sponsored by the West Virginia Association of, Coll of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers and StriveScan. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to your presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see nor hear you. This is just one of the many different sessions happening. Be sure to check out the full schedule at wbacrao.org. Again, that is westvirginiaacro.org. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same website, wbacrao.org. I'd like now to turn it over to our presenters. Thanks, Brittany. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us this evening. Um, we are um, representatives from all of the Marshall University professional healthcare programs. Um, so you're going to get an overview of all of our programs this evening, and then we will have um, a question and answer uh, portion for you to um, ask us any questions we didn't cover or things that you want to know. Um, I will go ahead and go around and introduce everybody really quickly and then we'll get started. Um, I'm Megan Russell. I am the Director of Recruitment and Development for the Marshall University School of Pharmacy. Um, also with me this evening is Dr. Scott Davis, who is a professor at the Marshall University uh, School of Physical Therapy. Um, Deborah Curry is um, one of our representatives from the Jones C. Edwards School of Medicine. Um, and then we also have Ben Spurlock with us, who is um, a faculty member at the um, new Marshall University Physicians Assistant Program. Um, so Debbie, do you wanna go ahead and kick it off for us? I'd be happy to. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. I wish we could see each of you, but it's nice to share this time with you this evening. Um, I am from the um, Marshall University Joan C. Edwards School of Medicine. And just a very quick comment about the School of Medicine. We are one of three medical schools, of course, in West Virginia. We are an allopathic medical school, so we have the MD degree. And we have each year around 80 students that we take. So we are the smallest of the three medical schools in the state. If you like the smaller class size, if you like kind of that family atmosphere, uh, Marshall Medical School would be a good fit for you because it is small and the class sizes are relatively small. One of the things that I would like to talk to you about very briefly this evening is our uh, pathway program. It's an, it called the Accelerated BSMD program. And you can find the policies and the requirements set out in great detail on the Marshall University School of Medicine website if you click under Accelerated Program BSMD and you will find the application and everything that you need and all of our contact information as well. So I'm going to give you just a very, very brief overview of this pathway program. It is intended only for West Virginia students. Only West Virginia students can apply for this program, so this is a perfect opportunity this evening to talk to you about this. It is open to West Virginia seniors who know that they are interested in going into medical school and would like to find a pathway to make that journey just a little faster and also a little easier. So I wanna tell you about that very briefly. With that accelerated program, we accept around 10 students each year. We've been doing this for about seven years now. So some of those first students that came in right after high school 
are already in their third year now of medical school. So it's been a very successful program. The students have done very, very well, and we're real proud of this program. With this program, if you are selected, and this is through an application process that I'll mention in a moment, and an interviewing process, if you are selected, then you would come to Marshall University right after high school. We don't allow a gap year. So if you're selected as a high school senior, you would come right into the pre-med program at Marshall University. You would then stay in that program for three years. So instead of the four years that would be typical for pre-med, you would be in the program only for three and you take a very specific set of courses during those three years. You stay with your cohort of 10 students. At the end of that time, if you still have a 3.5 overall GPA in your undergraduate three years courses, then you go directly to Marshall Medical School. You are accepted automatically. You do not have to take the MCAT, which is the Medical College Admissions Test. And the biggest perk of this program is all four years of your tuition is waived at the medical school. So you would not have any tuition all four years of medical school. And right now that's worth roughly $100,000. So it is a very large scholarship that we're pleased to offer. Again, it's only to West Virginia students. It is a highly competitive program. In order to qualify, you do have to have a 30 overall ACT or the equivalent SAT and a 27 in math or the equivalent SAT on the same test. You need to have a 3.75 GPA and then there is an application process. That application for seniors is actually open right now. If you go to the website to BSMD on the medical school, you click the button and it will take you directly to the application. You do have to have your Marshall 901 number in order to apply, but the application for this program is free. You fill that out. Our deadline is mid-January for seniors to apply. And then this year we will be doing virtual interviews. Normally we have people come on campus for a day and a half. Clearly we can't do that, unfortunately. So these will be virtual interviews. Um, you also will need to take a situational judgment test online this year. And that is all explained. I don't want to take time away from my colleagues, but that is all explained um, on that website. If you have any questions about that, my name's Debbie Curry. My information is all over that website. You are welcome to call me or email me at any time. I did get permission right before the call, the meeting this evening, to mention that we are in the final stages of another pathway program called an early assurance program. It will be a little different than this program. It doesn't have the tuition waiver, but it is yet another program that will make your way into medical school an easier path for you. So there will be details coming up about that, hopefully within the next month, maybe a little sooner. That will be on our website as well at the med school, so please check back for that. But if you have any questions at all, I'd be happy to answer them this evening. Or again, please feel free to contact me anytime. We would love to have you check out this program and Marshall University School of Medicine. Thank you, Megan. All right, awesome. So I'll go ahead and go next. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you. So hopefully you can see that. Um, so as I mentioned, I am from the Marshall University School of Pharmacy. We are also a four-year doctoral program. So at the end of our program, our graduates have a PharmD. Um, which is the licensure that you need to be able to um, practice as a pharmacist. Um, like Debbie said, we have just a little bit amount of time this evening, so I just wanted to hit you with a few of the most important things um, to know about our program. Um, so the first thing that kind of makes our program unique is that we are 100% flipped classroom active learning. So what that means is our students engage in a lot of hands-on interactive um, curriculum in the classroom to make sure that they um, stay engaged and they also stay, um, you know, interested in the topic. 
I know a lot of you are still in high school. You get bored with the 45 minutes um, of lecture in the classroom. So a lot of our class is actually not lecture based. It's more um, activity or hands on based. Um, our students also work in a collaborative environment, which means that our students sit in groups. Um, a lot of our work is done within groups. Um, so if you like to, um, you know, talk with your classmates and and study with your classmates, and this is the perfect fit for you. Um, our students actually switch groups every semester. Um, so you end up working with everybody in your class um, at one point or another. Um, and we like to call ourselves a family. Um, so you get to know all the members of your class and of your family. Um, and one of the great things about our program is Although it is, um, although pharmacy is a competitive field, we try to make our classrooms more supportive rather than competitive. So it's not one of those situations where you look at the person next to you and they may not be sitting there next year. It's one of those things where you look at the person next to you and they may be your best friend or your roommate um, going forward. Um, one of the cool things about pharmacy is you actually don't have to have a bachelor's degree to um, apply to pharmacy school. So you can check it out on our website. It's marshall.edu backslash pharmacy. Um, the our requirements come out to right at about 60 credit hours, um, which some students can do in as few as two years, um, others take three. Um, so it just totally depends on how you want to um, do that coursework um, that you don't have to have the bachelor's degree to apply to our program. Um, so if you are looking for sort of a fast track, um, then some students have completed our program um, from start to finish in as few as six years. Um, speaking of which, we do have, as Debbie mentioned, an early assurance program for pharmacy students. Um, so if you are interested in that, um, the application is available on our website and it is for high school seniors. Um, if you apply to our early assurance program and you're admitted um, and all the requirements and things are listed there as well, um, then all we ask is that you attend Marshall University. Um, you major in biology in the College of Science. Um, you take the two years of prerequisite classes that we ask of you. Um, and as long as you maintain that 3.0, um, then you pretty much have guaranteed admission to our program at the start of your junior year in college. Um, so this isn't a tuition paid program, but we do have scholarships available. Um, but it is a good um, fast track into our program. Um, we also just started this year a living learning community for pharmacy students. Um, so if you are planning to attend Marshall and you're going to live in the residence halls, um, then there are students that you can live with um, who will also be pre-pharmacy majors. Um, you'll attend pre-pharmacy club. You would also um, have some similar classes together so that you can start building those relationships early on. Um, if you don't want to take my word for it and you want to come see us, um, we are doing individual tours and we also have a virtual tour on our Facebook page. Um, but we have brand new state-of-the-art facilities here on Marshall's Health Sciences campus. Um, Stephen J. Cop Hall is our new academic building and that opened last fall. It's beautiful, um, tons of study space, very, um, very open to collaboration. So a lot, of, a lot of cool spaces where you can study and hang out. Um, and then we also have the landing, which is an apartment complex that students who are in any of the four of our graduate programs um, can live in while they attend. So if you have any questions, drop them in the box. We'll answer them after everybody's presentation or um, I've included on the screen our social media channels and then also our um, contact information. So if you have any questions, just let us know. All right, so Scott, you ready to go? I am ready to go. Awesome. Right. So I'm going to do something a little bit different in that I want to talk a little bit about what physical therapy is because some of you may be exploring different options and you may or may not be familiar with physical therapy. So many people think of physical therapy uh, as this picture would portray where we have an individual that has some sort of dysfunction. In this particular case, they are a trans femoral amputee and they're learning to walk again. So this would be what we would typically see in a movie where a physical therapist is interacting with a patient. But in reality, a physical therapist is a human movement expert. And our job is to preserve, enhance, and restore human movement and function. 
And unlike perhaps medicine or pharmacy, we tend to use physical measures or physical interventions. And those would include exercise or manual therapy using our hands. And then the use of heat, ice, electrical stimulation, uh, sound waves in order to provide a therapeutic effect. Uh, when you're in physical therapy and once you graduate, you can specialize in a lot of different areas and you can go on to do residency training after your DPT degree. And physical therapists specialize in a lot of different areas, orthopedics, neurologic physical therapy, cardiopulmonary, sports, pediatrics, geriatrics, women's health. So a lot of the same specialties that you would see in medicine, you would also see in physical therapy. Uh, so where do physical therapists practice? Uh, we practice in a lot of different places. Uh, private, some people own their own private practice. Some people work for a hospital. Uh, they work in a rehabilitation center, a skilled nursing facility. Some work on the athletic field. Uh, some work in the patient's home and some will work in the school systems. So a little bit about physical therapy school. We are a doctoral program. Uh, we are a four plus three program. So four years of undergraduate education followed by three years of professional education in physical therapy school. So you need a bachelor's degree to go to physical therapy. And one of the questions that we often hear is, well, what should, my, what should I major in as an undergraduate? And the answer is anything that you want to major in, but you have to have uh, a certain set of prerequisite courses. So in order to be efficient in your undergraduate major and get your degree and the prerequisites, many of our students will uh, undergo an undergraduate degree in exercise science or exercise phys. Some of them do health sciences, some do biomechanics, psychology, biology, athletic training. But it's really up to the student as to what do you want to major in um, as an undergraduate. So the prerequisites that we require are a number of science courses. We require two biology, two chemistry, two physics, anatomy, physiology, statistics, and two psychology courses. Now, the nice thing about some of the majors, such as exercise science and health sciences, is that you will get a lot of these courses as part of your undergraduate major, and it makes the process very efficient. But you could be an English major, you could be a journalism major. I have actually had students who were accountants that decided to go to physical therapy school. Um, we like some of the other programs, pharmacy and medicine. We are starting an early assurance program. Uh, so this will only apply to those students that are starting at Marshall as a freshman in 2022. Uh, we will have that early assurance program. Uh, essentially what we're going to do is to assure a student coming in as a freshman that we will hold a seat for you in physical therapy school four years later, as long as you meet certain metrics. And our uh, requirements for this early assurance will be that you have a 25 on the SAT or a 1200, uh, 25 on the ACT or a 1200 on the SAT and a 3.5 uh, GPA. Um, so we haven't started this program yet, but we're excited. And this is open to both West Virginia residents and non-residents. Um, unfortunately, we do not have any scholarships associated with this at this time. Um, a little bit about getting into PT school, it is somewhat competitive like most professional programs. In the last cohort that we took, we had 264 applicants and we take 40 students. And we generally offer about 120 students an interview and this year that will be virtual, but typically we bring students to campus for the interview process. And our average applicant has a GPA of about 356. Uh, we take a slightly more, on average, slightly more non-residents than residents, but it's close to 50-50. And physical therapy tends to be slightly more female than male, 
but we have had some classes that have been about 50-50. A little bit about our facilities. We are not located on the main campus. We're located about a mile and a half uh, east of the main campus. And we have dedicated facilities that are just for physical therapy students. And I just wanted to share a couple of photos with you. We are really blessed to have wonderful facilities. We have three large high-tech state-of-the-art classrooms. And then we have a wonderful research laboratory and all of our students will conduct a research project while they're in physical therapy school. So I hope that gets you a little bit excited about physical therapy as a possible option. And I look forward to answering some questions later. All right, I think it's my turn. So I'll go ahead and jump in here. My name is Ben Spurlock. I'm a physician assistant, but I'm also a member of the principal faculty here at the Marshall University Physician Assistant Program. Like Dr. Davis, I wanted to take a little bit of time to inform you guys about exactly what a physician assistant is, um, just for those of you who don't know. A physician assistant is a medical professional that actually works under the license of a physician. Um, when I say that, a lot of people think, well, that just means that they're a helper of the physician. You can think of it like that. But I always explain it as we're an extension of that physician. I work in emergency medicine primarily, so I, I'm working around a lot of other physician assistants, nurse practitioners, and doctors. But I'm seeing the patient once they're brought back to the room. I'm doing my history and physical on those patients. I'm ordering diagnostic tests, whether it's blood tests or imaging on those patients. I'm using all that information to formulate a diagnosis and uh, come up with a treatment plan for that patient. And I go ahead and implement that plan, whether that's prescriptions, referrals, or even admitting them to the hospitalist. I'm taking care of that patient from beginning to end. Of course, physicians are around in case I have questions or if there is a procedure that you know, I'm not um, credentialed to do like in a patient or chest tubes at the facility I'm working in, the doctors are available for that. But largely there's a whole lot of autonomy that physician assistants get to enjoy. The other good thing about being a physician assistant is there's a lot of lateral mobility meaning that if uh, I decide I don't want to do emergency medicine anymore with my degree, I can actually transition into another specialty without having to do a whole other residency or going back to school. And um, physician assistants are expanding so much, we're in just about every corner of medicine. So I work emergency medicine, but you can also work in surgery, primary care, urgent cares, just about anything that medicine's involved in, there's a role for a physician assistant there. To let you know a little bit about our program, we're a newly developed program, so we'll actually be taking our first cohort in January. We're a 28-month program, so that's actually divided up into a first-year didactic, uh, meaning that lecture-based. We also utilize a lot of the things that the pharmacy school, pharmacy school does as far as flipped classroom and group-based learning. Uh, the second year is all rotations. There's 11 rotations. Uh, they're all located within an hour of our program. Uh, our dedicated space isn't actually on the Marshall campus. We're on the Huntington VA campus uh, associated very closely with the hospital here. Our cohorts uh, for this class are actually uh, 25. We take 25 students in this class and the next class. So the student to faculty ratio is really small. So we get to know our students, our students get to know us so we can share our experiences and really make sure that our students are doing well. One of the other things that our students get to enjoy that not every program has is a cadaver lab. So in our first semester, we teach gross anatomy and we're lucky enough to offer a cadaver lab in order for our students to learn through dissection. The lab is actually located in our building here upstairs. We share it with the medical school, but our students get to enjoy the luxury of having a cadaver lab with four dedicated cadavers. So that's something that we are really proud of. Speaking of things that we're really proud of, the biggest selling point that I have about our program is the clinical faculty. You know, our principal faculty are largely either practicing physician assistants or previously practicing physician assistants. And combined, we actually have over 100 years of clinical experience. Uh, and that comes from a variety of different backgrounds. Again, I did emergency medicine, but we've done dermatology, cardiothoracic surgery, psychiatry, and family medicine. So our students get to enjoy an eclectic array of instructors and uh, get to enjoy our different styles as well. Uh, like the physical therapy, um, we do require a bachelor's degree. Uh, it can be in just about anything. Uh, and we also have a list of prerequisites. I won't take up too much time. I'll, 
you can see on your screen right now our website if you want a little bit more information about our prerequisites. Uh, we do require you know, the GRE or the MCAT as well. Our current application cycle just ended on October 1st and our next application cycle will actually open up in late April and extend through October. And that'll be for the January start of 2022. Uh, I'm happy to be here to answer any questions that you have, but if you have questions and want to get in touch with us personally, please feel free to reach out through our email and also give us a call. Uh, you can see the email and the phone number on there. So we'll stick around and answer questions and feel free to ask us just about anything that you'd like. All right, so we don't have any questions in the uh, the Q&A box yet. So if you want to go ahead and drop one in, we're happy to answer that. Um, but we'll go ahead and tell you a little bit about um, what a couple of things that you could do um, as high school seniors or high school juniors um, going into college as freshmen that can prepare you for um, professional school. So does anyone want to go ahead and give some advice? I'll be happy to, to jump in on that. Um, okay. Uh, just real quickly. Um, yes, there are some things um, really for most uh, professional careers that you can do even now when you're in high school. Um, one of those things that we highly recommend is that you start keeping a journal, get in the habit of journaling when you volunteer or when you shadow, have those contact um, your, your supervisor, um, your information about what you've done. It's amazing how fast that can go, uh, you know, from your, from your mind when you finish high school, you get into college. But if you get in the habit of that, that's something that I'm sure that all of us in healthcare are interested in. We want to know if you've been of service to your community. We want to know if you've shadowed and had an opportunity to understand what these careers are about. So you will be asked those kinds of questions on applications and journaling now will help. The other really quick thing that I would offer is to practice interviewing now. Um, interviews are, and I'll, I will just speak for the med school on this one, I don't wanna step on anybody else's toes with this, but at the medical school, um, interviews are absolutely critical. Um, we typically have each year for our regular medical school around 2,000 applications, and we only accept 80. Now, all those are not in state, but it is very competitive. And one of the, the, the tools that we use um, in order to kind of determine who would be a good fit and who would be a good physician would be that interview process. We take it very, very seriously. This year, it's gonna be virtual, which is new for us. We typically have it in person, but it's still going to be critical. So any time that you have an opportunity to practice with a teacher or a neighbor or your pastor or um, you know, a, a, a parent, if you have an opportunity to practice um, and, and really learn how to, to make your case, be enthused, be engaged in an interview, uh, I think that will be a tremendous help to you. One of the things that I would offer is that I meet with a lot of students and um, those students that are applying to PT school and many of them are worried that they won't get in because they got off to a rough start. And we oftentimes see students that didn't do as well as they wanted in their freshman, sophomore year. And I will tell you, it's not a deal breaker. I mean, you can, you can still achieve your goal, but my advice to you is to don't get in that situation if you can help it. So really apply yourself in that first year, seek help, seek whatever services. Marshall has a lot of services for disability services, for mental health services. Uh, if you're missing home, you're stressed out, but really try to get off to a good start so that you don't get in a hole and you don't have to dig out of that. One of the things that I would strongly recommend, especially since um, Marshall has so many professional healthcare programs is do your research. It's never too early um, to start looking into those things. Dr. Davis did a great job and so did um, Ben about talking about what those specific um, careers encompass. 
Um, a lot of people will enter into school and somebody's told them to be a nurse or somebody's told them to be a doctor and they don't really know what, you know, what that actually means. Um, so shadow, talk to people who are actually in that profession, do some research. Um, and the good thing about it is if you major in something like biology or exercise science um, or chemistry or health sciences, those classes are pretty standard as far as a lot of our prerequisites go. I'm just looking at PT and at PA um, as far as the classes that you need. We also require bi biology and chemistry and physics. And so nothing says that you have to be decided your freshman year. Um, so take some time and, and look around. And we do have some questions in the chat box now. So. Um, the first question is, does the PA school have an early admission program? So as of now, we do not. Um, we do operate on a rolling admission cycle, being a master's graduate program that's just developing. We hope to start working with Marshall's advisors to build some kind of early admissions so that we can start recruiting a little bit uh, sooner. But it, it is advantageous to apply sooner just in the length of the cycle. To kind of mirror what everyone else said as far as how you can kind of get a jump start, like Megan said, I do, I do uh, always request that people do shadowing. We don't require it. Just there's so many options and, you know, PT and, and PA, there's so many things to do and it's hard to describe without actually being there and witnessing the day in, day out stuff. Um, and it, I think it fuels the passion that people have for each profession. So I always suggest that. And the other thing, working in admissions, make sure that you, uh, your application reflects all the prerequisite requirements, you know, the minimum GPAs and all the courses, because you want to make sure that your application is a, as competitive as possible when it does come time to apply. All right, awesome. Um, so the next question is, I'm interested in pharmaceutical sciences and was directed here for the School of Pharmacy by my school counselor. Yes, so in addition to the four-year PharmD program, we do have a Master's of Science in Pharmaceutical Science. Um, and so that program is really geared towards students who want to become researchers. Um, it is a very research heavy um, curriculum. It's two years. Um, and a lot of students may decide to do both um, the MSPS as we call it and also the PharmD. Um, the MSPS will also prepare you if you want to go on and get your PhD in a specific area. Um, a lot of our faculty are um, PharmDs, but we also have faculty who are PhDs who are primarily researchers by trade. Um, so if you are interested in that, all of that information is available on our website. Um, but the MSPS, they do require a bachelor's degree to apply to that program. Um, and again, it's two years. It's a, it's a standard master's program. Um, but that does prepare you if you do want to go on and get a PhD or if you want to work in industry, um, if you want to work in something like research and development, um, that's, that's really what that career um, or what that degree would prepare you for. Okay. Um, we have one that says, if I get my bachelor's degree at Bluefield State, can I transfer into the PA program? So as far as transferring, um, no, but you can't apply. So you can actually get your bachelor's degree from just about anywhere. And again, and any kind of major, um, but there's an application cycle. There's a central application um, website that you have to send all your PA uh, information to. That includes transcripts, your application and narrative, all your scores. And each PA program in the nation actually utilizes that site. It's called CASPA. Um, and then that that's be, would be the way that you'd apply. And then we would take that application and then review it in our normal process. And just to reiterate um, what he said, and I think this goes for all of our programs, all of our programs have an application process. So if you do pursue your bachelor's degree at another, um, at another school other than Marshall, you have to apply to our program. And our students who attend Marshall also have to apply to our program. Um, so it's technically not a transfer, it's applying to a whole new college, essentially, even if you did um, attend Marshall as, um, as an undergrad. So um, when he says no transfer, that means that you're not necessarily going straight into that program. And it's the same thing for all of us. Okay, um, so the next question is, so you offer orthopedic services. 
Um, I don't know if that means like orthopedics as far as a program, but I would say that the other three programs other than myself would probably be able to talk more about that. Yeah, I wasn't sure who that was directed to, what discipline, but um, in physical therapy, we have orthopedic courses and that is part of the curriculum. And then after you graduate, you can specialize to be an orthopedic physical therapist so that you are working with patients who have orthopedic conditions. Um, and I imagine that's probably, I, I know in medicine there, obviously you could go on and get a residency in orthopedics. And I assume there's something similar in PA as well. Absolutely. With, with medical school, um, in those four years, your first couple of years are um, classes, and then you do clinical rotations. So some of your rotations would be around orthopedics um, and surgery, and, and of course you would, not just those, but you would see other things, OBGYN, family medicine. Um, and then, but then you would decide when you got ready to apply for residency, if you wanted to specialize and the orth you would apply for an orthopedic residency, but we absolutely do offer um, that at Marshall Medical School. Yeah, and the PA program also offers instruction on orthopedics. Um, so you'll get some of that gross anatomy. We're a systems-based approach as far as our curriculum goes. So orthopedics is actually taught in our second semester when clinical medicine starts. Um, and then also on our rotations, orthopedics is one of those rotations that not every PA program offers because you get orthopedics in emergency medicine and family medicine, and those kinds of things. But we do have a dedicated orthopedic rotation. And then it is, once you graduate, you can end up going into a orthopedic specialty, yes. All right, we hope that answers your question. Um, another question that we have is what kinds of hands-on stuff do you do for the pharmacy program? So um, when I talk about active learning and flipped classroom, that's probably um, not familiar to you. Um, and I'm sure the PA program is gonna be similar as well in, in their teaching style, but Basically what that means is you're used to going to school and somebody giving you information and then giving you homework and you take that home and you do it. So our students actually get their homework ahead of time and we call it pre-work. Um, and so it's information that they have to go over before class. So that could be anything from like a PowerPoint or a video they have to watch, articles they need to read. And then when they come into the classroom, they do um, little quizzes that we call IRATs and GRATs. So IRATs are for individual readiness. Um, that's to see what you learned from the material. And then the group readiness assessment is to see what your whole table or your whole group learned. Um, and from there, the faculty who um, are teaching the class can kind of figure out what areas maybe the students didn't um, understand as well. And then a lot of the activities in class can be anything from like a group debate, to group papers, to Jeopardy, to uh, we use Kahoot a lot. So there's a, there's a lot of things that, um, that they do to drive that material home. So by the time that you take it home to review it again for your exam, you've not only done the pre-work, but you've also had it in class. So this is the third time you're getting to look at it. Um, so we wanna make sure that that activity in class kind of drives home the concept rather than introduces you to it, if that makes sense. So um, our students also have to take lab. Um, so compounding lab is offered in your first three years. Um, and then our students have rotations as well. Um, so pharmacy students do have required rotations. Um, that can be anything from retail pharmacy to um, ambulatory to specialty places like uh, geriatric rotations and so on and so forth. Um, pharmacy students don't have to do a residency when they graduate, but you can specialize. Um, and it's pretty much the same type of residencies that you would see in PA or medicine, you know, pediatrics, oncology, critical care, those types of things. So I hope that answers that a little bit. Um, I don't know if I want to be a physician or a physician's assistant yet. Is there anything I can do to help figure that out? That's a really good question. Um, so I actually had to answer that question for myself because I was at Marshall and then I was pre-med and then I decided to go into uh, physician assistant studies. So for everyone, there's different factors why you go into medicine and those two roles are pretty closely related, but there's a, 
fair amount of difference in the education. Um, so you, I, what I would suggest uh, without trying to sell you on the PA program too, too much uh, is just talk to people that do both. Uh, try to seek out some physician assistants, kind of get their take on the career and the education. Um, the pros and cons, uh, it's really hard to get somebody to talk about, you know, what they might not like about their profession, but there's good and bad in every profession. So seek out that honest criticism along with all the good stuff. And then you really have to answer that question for yourself because both of those have a lot of time and a lot of commitment, you know, financially and personally uh, to make that decision. Biggest thing is just making sure that you're answering that question for yourself and true to yourself because you have to live with whatever you do decide. So that would be my suggestion. And, and I would agree completely with Ben. Um, the, the best thing to do would be to seek out folks um, in your community or, you know, associated, maybe you have parents, friends, or other folks that are doing those jobs. And that, I think that's the best way to make your call is really make sure that you understand the totality of what's involved in both of those careers. You know, I always tell people, don't make it just on how long you have to be in school. Don't make it just on the money situation. Um, you're going to be in school for a long time with both. That's, that's just the way it is. Um, and the, the tuition um, for in-state students is really reasonable for both programs. Um, you're really very fortunate about that with all of our programs. If you're an in-state student, because Marshall's a state university, they're really reasonable and there's scholarship money out there, even for these graduate programs. So I, I agree with Ben, um, talk to as many people as you can and make that choice yourself, not just what you think other folks might want. All right, we only have time for the last two questions that are on here. Um, so thank you all for being awesome and submitting us questions so that we didn't have to like sit here and figure <laughs> out what we were going to tell you. Um, but so another question we had was, would it be best to start as Marshall at Marshall as an undergrad, or does that have any type of effect overall in the application process as far as pharmaceutical science goes? Um, obviously, we always want you to choose Marshall, but we do accept students from all um, what we consider regionally accredited institutions. Um, so if you want to come to Marshall, great. We you would probably have more experience with our faculty um, early on as an undergrad. Um, but as far as application goes, you can really attend um, any institution. Okay, so the last question was, what should I get my bachelor's degree in to help me get into the PA program? My internet kicked me from Zoom while that was being discussed. <laughs> we understand. <laughs> <laughs> we only have two minutes. So I'll try to keep this brief. So it can be in anything. You just need a bachelor's degree. A lot of people end up going into biomedical science, biology, or chemistry, just because that allows you to get all the prerequisites that we require. If you check out our website, there's a long list of our prerequisites. Those are what people typically do, but we take, you know, athletic trainers. We've got some people that have done business. So it really doesn't matter what your specific degree is in or your major is, as long as those prerequisites and that you have some sort of bachelor's degree. All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in with us. I think there's some housekeeping announcements at the end here, but we do, uh, we will receive your contact information and you have ours. So if you have any questions, please let us know. Hi everyone. Thank you so much for attending today and thank you for joining us. When you close your window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide also, this was just one of many sessions being hosted. Be sure to sign up for additional sessions at wvacrao.org. That is westvirginiaacro.org. In the next week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions recordings at wvacrao.org. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, thanks everybody. Uh, thank you. Bye.